Yo, creators, what up? We got the Canon R7 in here today. This is my new little space, just so you know, had to throw that out there. But we're gonna be testing this Canon R7 out. I'm gonna take it outside and do some stuff with it. I'm gonna talk about a few little things that I noticed about this camera off the rip. All right, first things first. Obviously, this is a R7 and it's an APS-C sensor, which means there's a 1.6 times crop factor with any lens that you put on here. So I have a 17 to 40 millimeter on here right now, but that 17 millimeter uh, is the widest the lens can go, and that is multiplied by 1.6. Time. So this 17 millimeter is gonna be multiplied by 1.6. So it's not really a 17 millimeter, but I have a crazy fix for that. If you do have this camera and you're tired of that crop factor on your lenses, I got something for you. All right, so this right here is an adapter. It's the Canon e uh, EF to EOS R 0.176 adapter that you can throw onto crop sensor cameras. It's made for a C70. We'll talk about that another day, but you can also use it on this camera and that's what we're gonna do. Now, the reason that I'm gonna do that is because I don't like crop sensor cameras. I think that they should be full frame. Crop sensor is cool for certain things, like maybe making the IBIS better on this camera, which is not that great. So I'm gonna put this bad boy on right now and show you the difference in frame right. All right, see, that looks a lot better. It's way more full frame. You get more, I can get close. I'm super close to the lens right now and I, there's a lot in the lens right now. So if you do have a Canon R7, I advise you to look into this because this is gonna make it a whole different experience using the Canon R7. All right, now that we have changed the perspective and it looks way better, this makes it great for vlogging as well, which that's what we're gonna be doing today while testing this. Another thing that I have on is the zebra so I can see what's blown out. I noticed that if you use auto ISO, which that's what I use all the time when I'm vlogging, it overexposes, like the highlights were blown out. So what I had to do is put it on auto exposure, push this little button to bring down the exposure so that it underexposes just a little bit at negative one third. So now my skin tones are not blown out and I'm using the auto uh, ISO. But then the only downside to that is when you're filming something that's really dark, it can underexpose it the wrong way. You'll have to change it back. That's what I noticed with the auto ISO. I noticed that about this camera, the Canon R5, the R6, they all kind of overexpose a little bit on the highlights when you're using auto ISO. And like I said, that's what I use when I'm vlogging because I don't want to be changing the settings all the time. It just is easier to put it on auto but don't overexpose me Canon come on all right so real quick before we go outside I'm gonna show you this little um, warning comes up using that adapter you just hit okay and it goes right through uh, I'm gonna show you real quick the settings that I'm using just so you know what's going on and what I like to use with this camera off the rip so first of all we're going to 4k we're going to 23.98 we're going to IPB because that's the best we can use then we go to the next one next one uh, we're not shooting with log I'm actually shooting in a neutral picture profile which I come to use neutral come down to contrast and I take all of the contrast out just to give that um, this is just what I like to shoot vlogs in so I don't want to be coloring down C log for a vlog then we come here to the next one and the high ISO noise reduction is usually up I take it to disable just because I don't want it to try to fix uh, noise in the footage next one nothing here um, shooting info I always come down and use this three by three just because I want to be able to level things out whether it's a picture or a video make sure it looks good then there's one thing that kills me on this camera if you come to the uh, settings back here power saving screen dimmer they got it set for like 10 seconds off the rip when I, when it first comes out of the box I come and disable it because I don't like my screen to disable it just bothers me I don't care about saving the battery I do not want it to keep dimming on me that's annoying then we come here to the autofocus um, obviously we're gonna enable the servo I use one point I like one point a lot and then I also like the whole area but usually I'm using one point so I can aim it at whatever I want and it focuses at that especially with vlogging I aim it right at my face Then subject tracking you can cut on so that it can contract like people in your face or it can track animals vehicles whatever so cut subject tracking on do people and that way it'll track my face but sometimes I don't want it on so I'll come here cut it off it just depends it's all scenario based then if you come over here to this the servo autofocus speed I leave that at zero and then this track sensitivity I drop it down negative one just because I feel like the autofocus jumps around too much sometimes with these new mirrorless R systems so I just bring that down a little bit I don't want it to be too fast because it can look ugly when it's jumping uh, focus okay last but not least this in body image stabilization is trash so always I keep it off I do not want this on I want it off at all times maybe if I got a closer lens 50 millimeters and up and I'm not moving that much but this stuff is trash so if you are thinking about using this don't do that just put it on a gimbal
So that is why you don't use the in-body stabilization and you use the gimbal on your shots because you get nice, clean, cinematic footage like that. You don't gotta worry about the wobbles. Matter of fact, let me show you the wobbles real quick. All right, here you go. We got the Ibis on. It's trying to correct itself. It looks terrible. What in the world? Let's be honest. I would rather me have a shaky shot with my hands than it be trying to fix itself. This looks way better, bro. That looks way better. Yo, don't use Ibis, yo. Just get your hands stability up, all right? This comes from years of practice, holding the camera steady and still. Just work on that. Work on holding your camera steady or throwing it on the gimbal because this Ibis is complete garbanzo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one more thing that I just found out is with this 0.71 times uh, Canon adapter that makes it full frame, you can drop it down lower than what the actual aperture is on your lens. So this one is a 4.0, 17 to 40. With this adapter, you can drop it down to a 2.0. Downside to that is when you do drop it down below what your aperture on that specific lens is, you kind of get a little circleish vignette around the shot, and I just now noticed that. So you can't go lower. Don't do it. Don't try it. If you get this, you can still use it at the actual aperture of your lens, though. It looks good, right, Dean? <laughs> still got crack, crack. Yeah. So that was pretty cool out there riding the bikes. Uh, I need to get me a Super 73. But aside from that, this is the R7, and in comparison, there's like a R10 out. The R7 is $1,500, and I think the R10 is $980. So here's the thing. The R7 is the replacement to the 7D Mark II, and then the R10 is the replacement to the 90D. But I think that the 90D was better than the uh, 7D Mark II, but in this case, I think the R7 is better than the R10. So I don't really understand what can and has going on and they have just a ton of cameras that kind of look all the same and do really good because this camera is just as good as majority of the other ones that I've used so $1,500 for this camera uh, this whole video I've kind of been using the uh, 0.71 times um, Canon adapter the speed booster to be able to kind of bring down the aperture a little bit less than what the lenses are It's also making it much more wider than uh, it should be because this is a crop sensor camera If you want to get that and add it into the R7 that's gonna run you 599 more dollars So at that point 1500 plus 600 you might as well look into getting something like a Canon R6 or R6 mark 2 that just came out which I'll be making a video about here soon as well But yeah, if you don't want a crop sensor camera and you want to spend about the same amount of money you could just get you a r6 which is a full frame camera and it's going to be another step up from this r7 but if you already have a r7 and you want to make it full frame go ahead and copy one of those speed boosters uh 0.71 times canon adapter there's a link down below i'll leave it down below so you can go get it if you're interested in it but it's definitely something that you should look into if you have this r7 and you want this full frame almost capability if not full frame almost full frame i would use this r7 this r7 is pretty good as you can see the quality has been good the photos have been good the one thing that i do want to test is the low light and especially the c-log because the c-log on this camera is only c-log 3 and i think that the c-log 3 can be super washed out sometimes and just grainy i would much rather just shoot anything any projects on a neutral picture profile just like this i, I do want to test it and just show you guys because I think it's necessary, so we'll do that next. All right.
All right, here we are a few days later after using the camera a little bit, and I actually like it. Um, I don't like crop sensor cameras that much. I would much rather use a full frame camera, hence why I've been using this adapter to make this more full frame looking. I think the quality on this is extremely good, just like the rest of the Canon cameras. I think that the photos are really good. I've taken photos on it, I've done video on it, tested the low light, just a bunch of different stuff. Biggest thing for me is the low light on this camera, I feel like is not that great. Uh, once you start pushing the ISO up a little bit. Well, let me let me rephrase that. The low light in C-Log is not that great. That C-Log 3 is kind of funky. Uh, once you get into those darker scenarios and try to pump that contrast back in, it adds grain, but if you use a denoiser, it looks pretty good. Who do I think this camera is for? Maybe people with 90Ds, 80Ds, or any type of uh, Rebel Series camera that had a crop sensor and you're trying to upgrade to the mirrorless system. Um, this would be a good look for that, potentially. It's $14.99, $1,500 camera. If you want to make it the full frame, it's going to be another six, which makes it ultimately like 2100 plus tax. So you could potentially just get an R6 or an R6 Mark II if you want full frame. Go ahead and look into that. Other than that, if you do have this camera, it is a good camera to use. If you need that full frame look, then you can pick up this adapter. Also, I think my Sigma Art lenses look really good on this camera. I'm using the 17 to 40 Canon once again for the vlogging right now, and this looks pretty good too. That's really it, man. I got to return this camera today, so I hope that you like what I made with it. I hope that it kind of showed you some cool stuff and abilities for this camera because I think it's just, it's a good camera. I will see you guys in the next video. I got to roll out and get some stuff for my new spot, my new place. Um, we'll talk about this soon. If you are here on the channel, make sure you're subscribed um, if you're not. And like this video, drop a comment. All right, I'll see y'all guys in the next video. Peace.